Hey everybody, it's Nathan here. It's been a little while, a couple of days since I've done my last uh, Facebook Live. And this time around, I, I want to talk about another side to this whole thing that I've been dealing with because uh, it's about a combination of two things, self-sabotage and dissociative amnesia. And self-sabotage is one thing, and that's where you adopt a, a limiting belief of some sort that starts undermining the way that you live, and it can cause a, a lot of damage. Uh, I mean, I used to dr drive myself into poverty, and I spoke to a woman the other day who did exactly the same thing. So it's, it's something that happens in so many different ways So when we encounter something that is simply beyond what we believe as our ability to cope with. And that's a key thing. We believe that we do not have the ability to cope with certain things. And that's one of the things that triggers self-sabotage. And another one, which I've mentioned many times, is trauma. But this time around, I want to talk about dissociative amnesia, because that's been a huge part of my journey. And I know that it's also affected a number of other people, too. So I just want to uh, read a little bit from a document that I put together about the topic. So according to the Merriam-Webster Online Dictionary, amnesia is a condition in which a person is unable to remember things because of a brain injury, shock, or illness. Now, in this particular case, what I'm talking about with amnesia has to do with either traumatic shock or it could be an illness, although my experiences of it uh, have been largely to do with shock. And in terms of the way that it works with self-sabotage, again, I'm largely uh, returning, or sorry, referring to some sort of shock, some sort of traumatic shock. So, you know, one of the things that's really annoying about having amnesia is knowing something's wrong, but you're unable to remember what happened. And that's assuming that the amnesia leaves clues after you've suffered an attack. I mean, the first time around when I suffered amnesia, I didn't even know I'd been traumatized. I didn't even realize until 13 years later they came out of it. And it, sometimes the amnesia is, uh, what would the words be, all-inclusive or all-encompassing. And when it becomes like that, you literally do not know that you're suffering from amnesia. You don't know that you've literally walled off or forgotten a part of your life due to trauma. But other times it leaves clues. And that's what was, uh, that's what was happening for me at a later stage. I started to notice that, yes, I was suffering from amnesia, but it left clues. I could, I knew that something had happened, but I couldn't find my way back into it. And as I said, it was extremely annoying because I knew something was wrong. I knew I'd forgotten something important and I couldn't get back to it. So there are a few things I want to share with you today. You know, several years ago, 2012, 2013, I was on a surfing YouTube and I was looking at the videos of a guy by the name of Robert Smith. I know, very generic sounding name, but for real, he pioneered faster emotional freedom technique. And in one of his videos, he said, amnesia always leaves clues in the forms of feeling. And if you can find your way into the feelings, you can also get back into the memory and release it. So, at the time that I'd watched that, I had suffered a, a major trauma. Uh, it's the one that drove me into poverty, actually, because it was so severe. And it triggered amnesia. And after watching Robert's video, I was at a farmer's market the next day. And I was just wandering around, noticing the feelings in my body. And as, and as I did, a question came to mind, something I'd never thought of. And when I had that question in my mind, it, it felt like I was able to turn around and look behind a dark corner in my mind, or a dark wall at any rate, and, and all the memories were there, and within a flash, everything came back. I remembered everything. It lived in my mind for a little while, then it went away along with all of the negativity that went with it. And at the time I was looking for work, I called up one of my editors uh, that day, literally that day, and wound up with 10 writing assignments in less than 24 hours. So that was kind of cool. Anyway, so um, I just want to talk about some things that I've learned 
in my journey with dissociative amnesia and some ways to prevent the shock or the trauma from from knocking you off your perch. So, so here are a few things I want to share with you. So when a shock or trauma happens, you need to step away from it, literally. You need to disengage from whatever the shock or trauma is, whether it's happened by email or phone call or physical confrontation. In other words, and if it's physical, say, hey, I'm not dealing with this now. I'll, I'll come back to it later. And you do something else. doesn't matter what it is, just as long as you get away from the source of the shock or trauma. Secondly, do not let the shock overwhelm you. The trick is to be able to feel it fully while staying present in your body. Don't allow yourself to escape mentally. And eventually, if you, you stay with that feeling for long enough, it will dissolve. Another thing that you can do, and it takes some practice, is to acknowledge the shock and mentally dial down the intensity. And the last thing is to realize that you're safe, which is so important. It's that sense of not being safe that can really trigger the amnesia, uh, that can really cause it to come on full bore. There was one time when I suffered a really severe shock and I was walking home at the time and I felt the amnesia around me, I felt these huge ethereal clouds, big, big clouds all around me. And realizing that was the, the potential of the amnesia. And I could feel it moving closer. And I realized that if it enveloped me completely, everything would disappear into the fog of amnesia. So my challenge was to stay as present in my body as possible. And the more that I could stay there, then the shock would eventually dissipate. And in this case, the fog, the clouds of amnesia eventually dissolved. So it's really important that when you disengage from the shock or the trauma, that you give yourself time to, to process it. And later when you've calmed down, you can return to the original source of the problem. And assuming that it doesn't trigger you, and then you can re come from a place of resourcefulness. You can respond, not react. That's the key. So the challenge is to remember to disengage whenever a shock or trauma happens. And eventually you'll get to a point where you can hold the energy, literally hold the energy without letting it overwhelm you. So this is key. And the other bit is being present. So I just wanted to share that with you folks today. Um, hopefully it will be useful to some of you. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to get in touch with me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. So that's it for today. Um, thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.